Hi, I'm Miss Thomas. I teach ceramics at North High School and today I'm going to show you a demo on how you can make clay at your house. So we are going to make salt dough clay. There are three ingredients in salt dough clay. We've got flour, we've got salt, and we've got water and that is all you need. So I'm going to walk you through how to mix these together to form clay. So the first thing we want to do is we want to take our flour and we're just going to dump it into our bowl. And these are handmade bowls by ceramic artists. This one is made by me and the, these are made by another art teacher who teaches ceramics. Then we're going to dump in our salt. We're now going to mix these two together before we add our water. And once you have those mixed, we're ready to slowly add the water in. It gets a little messy, but that's the fun part. So we're going to take our water and just add a little bit at a time. Your hands are going to get really gooey. But you just got to keep mixing. This would be a great project for older siblings to do with your younger siblings. Little kids love to get their hands dirty and that's exactly what you're going to be doing right here is getting your hands dirty. Once you see it kind of start to crumble like that you know you're ready to add some more water. So I'm going to say that's pretty good and I'm ready to kind of knead this clay got this mess everywhere. I'm just going to kind of scoop it up and put it into my clay. So once you have it, it's all sticking together pretty good. You're going to want to knead the clay or wedge the clay. In my class, we call it wedging the clay. But if you are a baker, you probably call it kneading the dough. You want to get it to a nice, even consistency, and you're going to need to knead the clay, wedge the clay, for about 10 minutes. This is going to help all the clay particles stick together and support each other. So you would just keep on doing that for about 10 minutes until you have a nice, firm consistency to your clay. Okay, now that we have made the dough, we are ready to start sculpting with the dough. I have th this dough that I have here, I actually made yesterday. So you can make your dough ahead of time. You can just take some saran wrap and wrap it in saran wrap. It is recommended that you let your dough sit for 20 minutes before you start sculpting with it after you knead it but mine has set overnight, so it should be good to go. Um, the other thing you want to do is get yourself a work mat. I just have a piece of paper here. You're gonna wanna have that there to help with cleanup. You don't wanna make a huge mess. Today I'm gonna show you guys how to sculpt little clay monsters. So th these monsters I made from the salt dough and then painted them with acrylic paint. We're gonna make this little guy right here. Um, he's a little, chubby guy with his tongue sticking out. He's fun. So we're going to start with him. And when you're sculpting something, you just want to think about the basic shapes. So his body is an egg shape. So start with his body. So you're just going to pinch off some of your clay here. And you cannot make these salt dough sculptures too large. You need to keep them somewhat small. I wouldn't go any larger than what I have here. This is probably about um, and two inches in height. You don't want to go too big because gravity tends to kind of flatten this dough. That's why it works really well too for like cookie cutter ornaments if you want to do cookie cutter ornaments. Okay, so I'm starting here with his body. I've got an egg shape. Okay, I'm going to set that aside. Now I'm going to think about his feet. His feet are also made of two spheres. So I'm going to take some clay and I always tell my students when you're doing something that is symmetrical, so his feet, one foot on each side, that's symmetrical, you want to do them at the same time. 
So I'm going to do both of the spheres for his feet at the same time. And you want to think about proportion. Make sure the feet are in proportion with the body. Although monsters can be way out of proportion. So there's his feet. Let's go ahead and do his arms now. His arms start with a coil shape. And there's two of them. They're symmetrical. So we want to make both of them at the same time. I'm just going to start them out as little spheres here. About the same size. Now I'm going to roll them in a coil, but now I want to make it more like a cone or like a carrot, which means it's going to be smaller on one end and bigger on the other. So there, that's going to be his arms. Bigger on one end, smaller on the other. There's his feet, his arms, and now we're going to do the horns. And the horns, they look like carrots, don't they? So that's quite obvious. We're going to make those into carrot shapes. And again, there's two of them, so it's symmetrical. So let's do them both at the same time. Okay, so there's my horns. I'll probably end up making them a little smaller, but I've got all of my basic shapes laid out and I'm ready to start putting them all together. One thing that we need to do is we need water so that we can adhere these together a little better. So I need to get my water. And in the ceramics room, we talk about slipping and scoring, and this is about the same. We're not gonna have to score the clay, but we are going to have to add a little water to it, which would be like slip, to get them to stick together. So I'm going to pick up the body, and I'm going to add the feet first. So I'm just going to dip my finger. You just want a little bit. I'm going to dip my finger in the water, and I'm just going to dab it here where I'm going to attach the feet. And then I'm going to attach the feet and attach the other foot like this. And then you want to make sure that your monster is going to stand up. So you got to kind of push the clay around in the back to make sure he's going to stand up. You don't want him to fall over. So now I'm going to attach his arms. And then I'm going to just dip my finger in the water, put a little dab there, and attach it. Push it in there pretty good. Dip my finger, get a little bit of water, push his arm on. So we've got his arms. Now we're going to attach the horns. Going to add a little water here, and I'm going to show you guys how to use the toothpicks. So I'm going to take a toothpick, I broke it in half, and I'm just going to stick it right in the center of that, and I'm going to attach it by just sticking in the toothpick. And do the same thing to the other one. Okay, so we are ready to add the details to our monster. So I'm gonna start with a spoon, and I'm gonna do the mouth with the spoon. I'm just gonna kinda poke the spoon in, give him a little smiley mouth, and I'm gonna kinda push down, kinda open his mouth a little bit. I'm going to then use a toothpick, and I'm going to add in his hands over here, I'm going to take my toothpick and make an impression to insinuate fingers. You can do as many fingers as you want, and do the same thing on the other side. Symmetrical. And then I'm going to do some little toes. Just going to press in. But you could also use your fork to do this if you don't have any toothpicks. You're just going to get a little few more toes probably. The other thing that I did on this guy is I took a toothpick and I made some indentions going all the way around the horn. Just kind of pressing in. This is adding some texture. You could also make your monster have fur texture by using any of these tools. You could use the uh, straw to give your monster. I'll give him some scales here in the front. You could just kind of press it in.
And when you paint that, that texture is going to show through on the paint and it'll look like fish scales. I'm not going straight in, I'm going in at an angle because I don't want the whole circle. So now we need to add the tongue. So I'm going to take a little tiny bit of clay here, roll it in a little sphere, put a little tiny bit of water there on his mouth. And you can use tools to get in there where it's tight. So I'm going to use my spoon to kind of get in there and push that tongue down a little bit. Bend it over so it's sticking out. I do need to add the little indention on the tongue. I'm going to use a toothpick. Just kind of push that in. And then he has three eyes, so I'm going to make three little spheres, smaller than pea size. They're little tiny. And then we're going to add the eyes. And he's starting to take shape. He's starting to look like a monster. So the next thing that you would do with him is you would bake him in the oven. And you're going to want to bake these in the oven and you're, you need to get your parents permission. Don't just go use the oven on your own. You want to get your parents permission to use the oven. And it's at 250 degrees for about two hours when you have something that is this um, bulky. If you had a flat uh, cookie cutter type of ornament, you would probably only need to bake that for about 20 minutes. Then you're ready to paint. Um, I'm not going to do the painting demo, but I am going to talk about the types of color that you can use. I have little examples here. This is acrylic paint that I use. So if you have acrylic paint at home, you can use acrylic paint. You can also use marker. Watercolor works pretty good. And then if you have, if, if you used acrylic paint, you don't need to seal it. But if you did use watercolor or marker, you're going to want to um, either use a Mod Podge or a clear acrylic sealer, it, which comes in a spray can. And you can ask your parents or your older siblings or somebody older, old enough to know how to use those things to help you. I hope that you guys learned something today, and I hope you know that you can take tools from home and get creative with them. Thank you for watching.